So you will know, you will have, well, you will have an inkling as to what your calling is by how hard the enemy attacks you in a particular area of your life. If he's hitting you hard in your finances, guess what? You are most likely called to be a kingdom financier. That means he wants to give you wealth beyond your imagination. But you see, the key is believing. The sooner you believe, the sooner you get your breakthrough. Now you don't get your breakthrough overnight. You don't get to, from knowledge to believing overnight. It's a process. It's like, it's like working out. You want to get your muscles big. You don't pick up the, you know, the heavy two pound dumbbells. Right? And think one flex and you're Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know? One flex you'll be Arnold Passis. Right? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now you flex a few more times. Okay? And you, you make those, uh, those uh, little two pound dumbbells get bigger, 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 bigger. Then your muscles also get bigger, bigger, bigger. But until then, right? It's a process. Well, believing is the same thing. It's a process. And the process is called meditation you cannot escape meditation you will not get revelation simply by reading or by memorizing the scriptures you need to ruminate on it you need to chew on it you need to think about it again and again and again until you come to your aha moment now I know what this means see when you come to your aha moment that Knowledge became revelation. And when that sticks to you, the devil cannot steal it from you. And then you begin to see the manifestation of whatever that is. See? Now let's look at Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 19, this is his prayer. He says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might through His Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now, the goal is to be filled with the fullness of God. That's what this prayer is all about. But there are three things that he prays for. And I want to look at that rather briefly. The first is that you might be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. The Greek word for strengthened means to increase in strength, to make or grow strong. In other words, you don't go from weak to strong overnight. It's a process. And this is where it starts. To walk in the fullness of God, you need to be strengthened in the inner man. Now, I'm not going to take the time to say, well, how do we strengthen the inner man? Maybe some future message. How do we strengthen the inner man? Well, let me give you one, okay? I don't want to leave it without, without you know, leaving you empty-handed. I'll give you one way. I'll give you two ways. One is the Word of God. Feed on the Word of God. Second one is pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. One of the most effective ways to strengthen your inner man is to pray in tongues. Pray in tongues while you're cooking. Pray in tongues while you're washing your clothes. Pray in tongues while you're cleaning the house. Pray in tongues while you're commuting. Pray in tongues while you're driving. Pray in tongues during your coffee break. Pray in tongues while you're having lunch. I mean, just as often as you can, pray in tongues. You are strengthening the inner man. See, the inner man, the outer man, will only be as strong as your inner man. The stronger your inner man is, the stronger your outer man will be also. Many people work on the outer man. They go to a gym for it. They pick up weights. They, they do yoga, pilates, and, and all these other things. Why? They're strengthening the outer man. But the inner man is weak. That's why you've got people, for example, who do weights, run, bike, and then have a heart attack. Because the inner man is weak. You've got to strengthen the inner man first. The Bible says that exercise is good Paul said exercise is good but it profits little there's little profit to exercise I'm not saying don't exercise for those of you that go to a gym 
or have your own routine at home. You do your walking, running, you know, whatever, stationary bicycle. Good, continue doing it. You go on a certain diet. Good, continue doing it. But don't neglect the inner man. Now for those of us who don't have time to exercise, you have one of two choices. Make time or strengthen the inner man. Or both. But whatever it is, you have time, you don't have time to exercise, strengthen the inner man. Everything else will follow that. That's why this is the first in his list of three. Strengthen the inner man. Second, that he says, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. The word dwell in the Greek means to inhabit, to dwell, to live, to abide. But it also means to influence, to pervade, to prompt. Now, when you look at this, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I want to focus more on dwelling in your hearts. To dwell means to live there. He, he lives in your heart. But the purpose of living there is to influence you. See, God has called us to influence the nations. But that means we need to allow Christ to influence us first. Otherwise, what kind of influence will we be to the nations? Will we be a righteous influence or an unrighteous influence? The stronger your inner man is, and the more a man or woman of conviction you are, the more you will stand up for what is right. You don't put up with corruption. You don't put up with nonsense. You may be gentle about it, but you're firm. Well, you know what? This is how we do it in our industry. Yeah, but this is how we do it in my kingdom. In the kingdom of which I am a citizen. See, you begin to stand up for what is righteousness. For what is right. You're not trying to be holier than thou. You are not being arrogant. You are just being a representative of the kingdom of heaven. Which we represent here and earth. That's all. So, it's actually that Christ may influence your hearts. May prompt your heart. But it starts out by building the inner man. Strengthening the inner man. And as you do that, by reading the word and by praying in tongues, two only of a few other things you can do, as we do that, then His ability to influence us increases and our ability now to influence others also will increase. Many times our influence is not so much by our words, but by how we live. By the decisions we make. By the choices we make. Whether by word or by deed. We influence others. People are always watching us. Especially when you're excellent. Sometimes because they want to learn from you. Sometimes because they're waiting for you to make a mistake and fall. Always. You've got people on your side. You've got people that are not on your side. And finally the third one. 